Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I'm going to show you how you can combine guitar cabinet impulse responses. Actually, before I do that, I'll actually show you this. So Melda recently released this. It's M Convolution EZ, and this is free. So it has lots of different impulse responses included for free. You can see here it has chambers. Uh, it has like boxes so you can get all sorts of interesting sounds for more sound design purposes, like for example, laptop speakers. has plates and other things. And of course, it's just easy to use. It has wet dry here, so you can adjust this however you like. Widening, high pass, low pass, etc. But enough of that. Let's get into what this is really about. I'll delete that. And for this, we're going to use M Convolution MB. And so you see I have it set up using a multi-band setting. And here on the left, I'm using Celestian A-type speaker here. And on the right, I'm using a Creamback speaker. And so I'm combining these at the same time so I can just get my own sound in a way. So I'll let you hear this like this. Or this. And so this is a really you know, easy and helpful way to put these together. You're probably thinking, why would you want to use two impulse responses like this or like What's the point in combining them into one impulse response? And I should say, actually, the reason I would probably want to do that is because if I'm using some type of hardware, like I just recently bought a Moore G200, which luckily has you know, importable impulse responses, but the problem is it can't import multiple and use them at the same time. So I can only use one at the same time. But with this, it allows me to combine them together. And for those that aren't familiar with guitar cabinet impulse responses, they basically allow you to get the sound of a cabinet, which is great, but let's say you want to use multiple microphones on a cabinet, or you want to combine two completely different speakers. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can do that using these impulse responses. So this is just an example, but let's do one from scratch so you can really see how I did this. So turn this one off. I'll use this, it's a crunch sound. So let me turn on M convolution MB. So when you start it up, you'll probably see something that looks like this. Just go into the edit screen here. I like to set this to default. Now we have this, this is the blank screen. The first thing I want to do is I want to right click here in the multiband and turn this to disabled. The next thing I want to do is insert a band. I'm just going to use two bands because I only want to use two impulse responses, but you could use up to six if you really wanted to combine lots of impulse responses. It's possible to do that. But let's just insert one more. So now you see I have the two bands here. The next thing I want to do is link these and turn the dry wet all the way up. That's because for a guitar cabinet impulse response, I don't want any of the dry sound in there. And then I just unlink it. Now I'm going to choose whatever impulse responses I want. Let's say for this one, I can choose anything. Now, of course, I can use the custom path and find wherever my impulse responses are on my hard disk, or I can just go in here and drag and drop them. So let's see. I'm going to do a crunch sound. So let's try maybe a vintage 30. That sounds good. Uh, I'll do low gain, maybe all Celestian. I'll try that. I drag it over to here, and you see it loads everything up. Now I'm going to do the same thing in the other band here, and I'll choose some different impulse response. So let's see. Let's try this. This is G1235XC. I think this is kind of like a greenback. So what should I try? I'll try low gain all Celestian for this also. 
The next thing I want to do is probably going to be loud, so I'm going to turn the output gain down a little bit. And then while I'm listening to it, I'll adjust it so the input and output are matched. So let's do that now. Okay, so that's just to give you, you know, a hint of what it sounds like. And you're probably thinking, does this sound better than just one of them or does it sound worse? And I'll show you a way you can compare that. So let's go over to here. You see on the right side, we have A, B, C, D. And these are all kind of like comparison presets, I guess you could say. So if we go here, this little copy icon here, click it, move over to B, and then click paste. Now we have the same thing on A and B. But let's just solo this here and let's try moving the output gain up until it matches the input gain. So I'll do the same thing again. Okay, good. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing. Copy, go to C, paste, and this time I'm going to solo the other band and do the exact same thing and make sure the output is matched. It's sometimes hard to get them exactly matched, but try as hard as you can. So that way when we compare them, we can actually hear what the differences are. So now let's go back and flip through these so we can actually hear what the differences are between these different sounds. Actually, what I might do is even loop this section so it'll be even easier. So here we go, start with A. So I can hear the differences between all those, but I think B and A are sounding a little bit too similar. So maybe I'm getting a bit too much of this Vintage 30. So what I can do here in A is I can turn down the Vintage 30 just a little bit, maybe two decibels, and maybe I'll turn up the green back a little bit more. See how that sounds. And so you can adjust that to taste. Some other things you can do if you're wondering, you might think, okay, this is good if they're both from the same company, in this case, Celestian, but let's say I was using some different brands, two different brands, and things aren't matching up. The phases are out of line. I can go into the advanced setting and adjust the delay until they're matched up and everything, you know, the phasing problems are gone. Another thing I could do is I can go in here and equalize this. So that way, if I think, ah, there's too much bass on one of the impulse responses or too much treble, I can go in here and adjust that however I want. By right-clicking it, it'll bring up this whole menu and I can add high passes or low shelves or whatever I want, just as an example. And you can do other things here. There's lots of things to play with, but uh, that's only if you need it. I think just by itself, I just probably mess with the volumes like this. And so now... We have the sound that we like, if you like this. And what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to make a copy of this because we're going to need three instances to make the new impulse response. So I'm in Reaper, I'm just going to hit Control and pull this down, hit Control, pull this down. So now I have three of the same plugin. So the middle one is the one I want. The other two I'm going to use for something else. So just to make this easier to understand, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this here. So this is going to be the first copy. Second copy I'll leave alone, and the third copy I'll do, you know, just slightly differently. I don't know, I'll set this to filter or something. 
or actually I'll, no, I'll set it here, but uh, maybe I'll close this. You don't really have to do this. It's just, for me, it's easier visually if I do this. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna open the first one. I have the first one on top here, and this is the third one here. You can see it, one and three. And what I wanna do is I want to record the test tone that's coming out of this. So if I hit the test tone, you'll see it just makes a small, like a, a click sound. Oh, there we go. That's what we want. Actually, what I probably want to do here is turn this output gain off so that way it's getting close to zero. I don't want it to clip, but I don't want it to be too soft. So that might be a little bit better. Now, in here, I'm going to hit record, and then after that, I'll hit test tone, and that will make our new impulse response. So record, test tone. And let me write over this Celestian Crunch, okay? So this is our new impulse response that is combining the other two. So let's see here. I might just want to start a new default preset. Turn these other two off. So I just have this one. And then I'll go into sampled here, what I have it, and Celestian Crunch. Okay, so here's my final impulse response. Next thing I want to do is just turn down the output gain a bit, just so I'm not clipping, and then let's listen to it. There we go. And on B, this is our two impulse responses. This is just what I had before in the middle. When you switch between them, sometimes there's a little bit of a gap where the impulse responses turn off. But as you heard, for the most part, they sound almost exactly the same. So that's it. That's how you can combine different impulse responses together. You can combine up to six if you want. And if you're on a computer, this might save you CPU. And if you're using hardware, this will allow you to use multiple impulses in one. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done that. And be sure to check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. And make sure you download that uh, M Convolution Easy while you're there. But anyways, until next time, see you.